Hello and welcome to the American Chess Challenge. I'm Bruce Beck. This is Sudden Death Blitz Chess, and the rules are simple. Each player gets five minutes to complete the entire game. That's five minutes for white, five minutes for black. It's fast, it's fierce, it's unpredictable. Watch the best players in the world go for the kill on the American Chess Challenge. Our match analysts are senior master Maurice Ashley, who coached the Raging Rooks of Harlem to the National Junior High School Chess Championship last year, and Grandmaster John Fedorovich, who would be a major contender in this tournament if he were not providing color commentary. At age 16, Judith Polgar is the strongest female chess player in the world and became the youngest grandmaster in history one year ago. She is the original fast break chess player, coming at you full speed, trying to blow your head off in every game. With a World Blitz rating of 26-14, her game with Ron Henley is a classic match between a slugger and a boxer. Ron Henley is a scientific player, deliberate and careful in his strategy. He served as Anatoly Karpov's second during the 1990 World Championship and has a World Blitz rating of 2,500. His style is 180 degrees from Polgar's. He likes to slowly squeeze his opponents to death. The key to victory will be his ability to blunt her relentless attacks. Welcome to round four of the American Chess Challenge, featuring Judith Polgar and Ron Henley. Thanks, Bruce. Hello, everyone. This is Maurice Ashley here with Grandmaster John Fedorovich. This should be an exciting matchup, John. What do you think? Yeah, I think it will be because Judith is a heavy puncher and Ron is more like a counter puncher, so we'll have to see what, what happens here. All right, the players are starting out very basically, developing their pieces quickly. Judith is now attacking the bishop. The bishop has retreated. And they're just going to bring their pieces out in the early stages as quickly as possible so that later they can wage heavy battles uh, attacking one another and trying to pull each other's throats out. Judith is also moving very fast. She's a very quick player in this, so Ron has to be careful that he doesn't fall way behind on the clock because that, that could be fatal. Especially with this youngster. She's, she's known for ripping kings off. I mean, just killing you, coming straight at you and trying to destroy you. And Ron is known more as a solid player. Yeah, J Judith doesn't fool around. She likes to go straight after the king. Okay, at the moment, they've, they've castled, both sides have castled. You notice they're both safe. And they just need to get the other pieces out. This bishop still needs to come out, and this bishop needs to come out rather soon. Notice she's brought her bishop out to an aggressive post, holding this knight down momentarily, and Ron is pushing it back just a little bit so that he doesn't have that in his face. What, what's the situation here, John? Well, Maurice mentioned that this knight was being held down, and the fact is it's held down because the queen is right behind it. If the knight were to move, then the bishop would capture the queen, and this is an exchange that, that Black doesn't want to get into. All right, what John is mentioning is this knight here doesn't want to move because his bishop will swipe this queen off, and that's not a profitable exchange considering that the queen is a really big play piece. And now here, Judith makes an interesting move. She brings her bishop over to this side of the board near a point on the king. I'm not sure what she's doing with only a couple of pieces in the sector, John, but I know she's known to kill a king and she'll bring everything she can over there in order to do that. It looks like Ron has uh, um, used about uh, a minute and a half already, while Judith has used o only, about a half an uh, only about a half a minute. So Ron is already falling behind on the clock here, which he must be careful. But he has to pay attention here because Judith is getting ready to move some some pieces up here and, and possibly launch some attack on the king. Okay, at the moment he's exchanged off an important bishop, an attacking bishop that could have affected her situation. She's, she's incredibly well known, as I said before, and I can't stress this too much because many grandmasters have fallen to the power of her punch. She will checkmate you in a heartbeat. But at the moment, it seems as if Ron's position is very solid. Notice he has a centralized knight. There's nothing really attacking him. This bishop is the only piece attacking anything near his king, trying to hit this sensitive point. But in the meantime, really, Ron's in no serious danger. So I think he's doing okay. The only thing we might have to pay attention to is the time. Yeah, I think Ron is doing fine here because Ron, Ron, has, Ron has some sort of situation where... They have bishops of different colors. Notice that Judith is a white bishop and Ron's is a, is a black squared bishop. But Ron's bishop seems to be a little better than hers because it's exerting pressure on a diagonal. It's actually attacking a pawn. Meanwhile, Judith is attacking something also, but, but it isn't so, so good for her, though. Okay, now she's redeployed that bishop, and I think he's forced her to back up just a little bit. 
But in the meantime, this, the strength of this bishop has been magnified greatly because it restrains the king. The king cannot move over here. And in chess, as we say, the king's the thing. And if you get at that king, it's just over. Checkmate and the game ends. So right now, the tables may have turned slightly because Ron has some serious chances against her king. Now he threatens a particularly devastating move. Queen here would be checkmate. Notice this bishop restrains the king and the young attacker is now being attacked. She has to be extremely careful that she doesn't get blown away in this situation. Yeah, this is what we call uh, having your king in a chimney because it, it, it doesn't have one square here and it's stuck here. And, and, and it, notice there's nowhere to go. The wall of pawns prevents the king from going anywhere, and she's not used to being in this situation at all. She is just not happy with the situation, and now she sacrificed the pawn in order to bring her queen to help out the king. This is not what she had planned at all in this position, folks, and this is certainly benefiting Grandmaster Henley. Yeah, Ron's doing very well here because... Um he has a very safe king, and his pieces are, are starting to get into Judith's position. Notice the queen and the rook. And also the rook can start chewing on some pawns, which, which uh, he's, he's doing. She I, just dropped two pawns. Yeah, she, she's, uh, she's just in a lot of trouble here. But, you know, Ron doesn't have a lot of time left, and he has to be careful because Judy's very tricky. That's an extremely good point. Look at the time situation. He's already under two minutes. She has over three minutes. She's going to try and use that to her advantage. If she doesn't lose right away... That time will become very, very serious very shortly. And she's already looking for interesting tricks to attack Ron with. Ron has to be very careful that that knight that she's just moved doesn't hurt him. You notice he's getting, he's getting a little bit nervous. He's just touched that rook, so he must, he must move it. It's touch move in chess. Anything you touch, you must move. And now that knight has redeployed itself. It's attacking this bishop and this pawn. And the bishop has gone to a central location trying to continue some attacking possibilities. She's defending quite well, don't you think, John? Yeah, she's hanging on for dear life here. Um, she's, she's brought all her pieces. She's defending some pawns. She's down a little bit. But she, if Black gets this rook into the, into the game, then she has serious problems. She has to try and keep that rook away. Okay, now you can notice that Ron is getting extremely nervous. The time is bothering him tremendously. And Judith has remained completely stone-faced and completely cool about the situation. He only has a minute on the clock, and she is not going to let that go away. She has a full three minutes. She's just moving at blitz speed. Notice she has tremendous experience for a 16-year-old, but that's the nature of a grandmaster, and she's just won a pawn back. She's just won a pawn back. I don't think he's sure what he wants to do here. Yeah, I think he's lost a thread somewhat here because he, he just lost a pawn for nothing, and, it, and it's, it's a difficult situation. But it's true that the knight is, it could be trapped. She has to keep an eye on this situation. Right, this knight is not extremely well placed, but in the meantime, Ron is looking for a plan. It seems now his plan is to bring the bishop over here and attract and attack that wayward knight. Possibly also the bishop could come here and threaten a nasty checkmate with his rook coming in back. She has to watch out for several threats. And there he goes, attacking the king's position, and she parries the attack immediately. But now she goes after the wayward knight, which has to sacrifice itself, and she knows that he doesn't have much time left in this situation. But look at this past pawn. This past pawn has now gotten very, very dangerous. He's going to push that as fast as possible, try and get a queen, and that's going to knock her out if, if his flag does not fall. And now that's the only thing he's worried about. She's trying to harass him a bit. He's moving around. And now she makes a threat with a pawn. She's looking to somehow queen one of her pawns. And she, he has to be very careful of this possibility. There go the pawns. And there goes another one. This one looks as if it's going to get very dangerous. This is going to be a tight race. And he sacrificed, he sacrificed his bishop for that pawn. And now she's just removing as many dangerous pawns as possible. But it looks like it should be a one game for, for black if, if he survives the time situation. He doesn't have much time left. And he's going to have to really step up the pace here. You see him take the queen in his hand, anticipating one of the pawns reaching the back rank and, 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 uh, and going for promotion. He doesn't have much time left, and she's just trying to hassle him as much as possible. He's going to push those pawns down. Look, those pawns are getting closer and closer to queening, and he's just queened a pawn. She removes that queen, but he doesn't have much time left. Will he be able to checkmate? I don't think he'll be able to checkmate. He's trying very quickly, and now he's hunting down the king, and he checkmates just in the nick of time, folks. An incredible display of Grandmaster technique at the end.
Ron Henley pulled that one off at record-breaking speed. That was a great, that was a great uh, uh, time scramble, Maurice. And Ron played very well in the time scramble, showing nice cat-like quickness, moving very quickly. It's not easy to do that. Looking at the chessboard, trying to find moves and moving quickly, trying not to knock the pieces over. It's a very, it's a very difficult thing. That's right, John. I want to remind everyone to stay with us for the post-game analysis. We'll break it down, move by move, and explain what the Grandmasters were doing so that even a beginner can follow the action.